sure what you hit. The tree. The tree. Yeah. I guess when I went out like this, I guess I had uh So it turns out they're filming Gotham season three. I don't watch it, but let me tell you something. There's a lot of stuff going on to film a scene of a TV show. It's big budget stuff. Nowhere near the budget that Keep Your Daydream TV has. This is so much work between packing up, getting to the subway, then getting to the train, then getting to the car, then getting to the RV. But I will tell you, so much less stress going back to the six to go up north because we know exactly where to go. We're all so accustomed to walking. It's the same shenanigans as to when we got here without all the confusion and uncertainty and all that stuff. So we're definitely a lot more acclimated to New York. We're gonna miss this city. It is a little fatiguing, but it is a lot of fun. Thumbs ups. Thumbs up, thumbs up. While I was carrying this up, I was also carrying Caleb's thing up. Oh my gosh. And then Rory goes, how do you get up the escalator? And I go like this. And then immediately after I got stuck on a recycling bin. <laughs> You excited to be home? Home. I like. I'm happy. Wait, what's with the air quotes with home? I, why? Why is it home? Because it's mobile. <laughs> mobile edition. Man, it's quiet here. It's quiet. Crazy quiet. She's like super happy. She's oh, is just she? Walking back and forth. Yes. She's like, this is what they call grass. Oh, how you feel, May? I'm so excited. You city dog? Huh? We were smart enough to do all of our laundry in a laundromat this morning in New York. <laughs> trish, trish. I love the we. I carried all of that down all the stairs. I loaded it. I timed it. I dried it. I folded it. And I brought it all the way up all the stairs all by myself. And I packed it, and now I'm unpacking it. Here's my idea. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. You are headed to go see Totem uh, outside of New York or something? Yeah, a I'm little bit. I'm not really sure. Yeah, somewhat close to the city. One of the Before... greatest sailors in the world. Because they sailed the world. We are leaving KOA New York. I'm so sad. Last. Who's sad? I am. Me. That was I am. a good KOA. <laughs> Everybody's a little... Sad. I know. It this was a good our KOA. Second home. Um, one of the big stresses we had when we came to New York is where were we going to leave the RV when we went into Manhattan for two weeks? And the fact that we were able to leave it here was like, for me, such a relief. And just such great peace of mind, too. Here we go. See ya. KOA guys. Oh, you know what they're building? What? A haunted house. Oh, really? For Halloween. Oh, my gosh. I got yeah. Where are you going to put that? I was hoping by the tennis court. Which tennis courts? The one back there? The problem is we have a meeting today. Oh, yeah. We're pretty loaded. It's going to be pretty tough to get that up there. Um... I might do some maneuvering. Okay. Do they know you're bringing this up there? Well, who's called, they? We called earlier today and spoke with someone at the front office. Yeah, they said they'd be able to accommodate, but... Okay, how long is it going to be here for, you know? A few hours. Yeah. Oh, just a few hours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I thought you were there for like a couple of weeks. Oh, no. oh, no, no, no. Um, I mean, I'd love to leave in the morning, but that's, 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 a, that's an extra.
2008 mm -hmm. down the coast. We entered Mexico in November, and then we spent the next year and a half on uh, Pacific coast of Mexico. During the su summer of 2009, hurricane season, we brought the boat way up into the Sea of Cortez because you get far enough north to be out of the real risk or the bigger risk of hurricanes. Yeah, all of 2014 was then just up and down this peninsula. Um, combination of getting boat work done, waiting around while engine stuff had to be dealt with, and, um, and just having a lot of fun, actually. There are a lot of cruisers there. In a way, it's sort of like Mexico, where a lot of people come from the U.S. down to Mexico and hang out, or the East Coast, they come down to the Caribbean and hang out. Well, in Australia and New Zealand, they get to Southeast Asia because, you know, the living is good, it's warm, it's cheap, mm -hmm. it's easy, yeah. and so just, people just stay. Um, we left January 2015. Thailand to Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka to Maldives, and then down the thousand miles of Maldivian atolls to Chagos, uh, British Indian Ocean Territory, Chagos to Seychelles, Seychelles Comoros, um, got into Madagascar in September 2015. And then from Madagascar to South Africa, Stonington. Well this is like a huge lake for what five yeah. months? So yeah, I mean, it's, we did a lot of miles this year. It's yeah. like over 9,000 miles or something for the year. Uh, 9,000 uh, nautical miles. Wow. And showing our kids the world and helping them appreciate this place that we live in. And what a mistake that was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I just feel like, you know, we live, we live such incredibly out. privileged lives in America. Mm -hmm. You have, it's so easy to grow up here and you think you know pain, you don't know pain. <laughs> so now, what do you identify with? What is home? Yeah, or as like like home. as home is right here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> boat, right. We identify with our family and the sailing community mm -hmm. more than, in a way, more than American culture or that. And uh, yeah, it's we don't. I don't want to make any judgments on things because we all live our lives, and everybody <laughs> has different uh, opportunities and slices of things. But um, but. Uh, for us, it's been away a long time, and it's hard to identify with a lot of parts of um, Western culture and, and busy lives that um, that um, seem like people don't have much opportunity to spend with their children, and and, uh, and um, everything seems scheduled and overly processed, uh, and uh, it doesn't feel natural. Processed is a good word. Yeah. So, no, no yeah. <laughs> I can't even perform under these conditions. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and I was I was promised some some words. That was good. We'll get it tomorrow. <laughs> Here. 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 Just okay. tore the awning off of the trailer. It's bad. We parked in front of a post office. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna park right here, Trish, and you're gonna go back to the site to see if anything is on the ground. Okay. And then I'm gonna assess this, and then we'll go from there. The tree. The tree. Yeah. I guess when I went out like this, I guess I had uh, what's called, uh, I don't know, there's a term for it. There's a term for it.
No. Okay. I am really, really bummed. It's called like trailer swing or something, and that is how many feet are behind your rear axle is what you need to pay attention to when you're pulling out of a curb. And I don't know if it's just because we've spent, hold on. Oh. The door is not opening because of the awning. Here. Thank you. This is a hell of a repair. We got the damage at the top and a new awning that needs to get put on. And those awnings don't look, they don't look cheap. Made cheap, but they don't look cheap. You did a good job. Thanks. So what I did is I duct taped the awning together here like this. So it, because it has a spring mechanism inside. So it's holding this together. And then we bungeed it to the bumper right here. And then we uh, cinched it with this webbing to hold it on the corner so it doesn't, so it doesn't bang. So Jamie with Totem last night said something really interesting when we were talking about what makes one passage or one ocean crossing more difficult than another. I thought what he had to say was insightful. He said, what makes one passage more difficult than another is the variables that you have to deal with. I feel like that applies to taking your RV through New York. <laughs> there are so many more variables out here. The first variable is these insanely crappy road conditions it just adds it just adds stress to it because even when I mean you're dodging potholes the traffic is another variable you've got semi trucks passing you on the right and left the third variable are these tolls I mean that adds another layer of stress to it because it seems like you're just you know dropping anywhere from a buck 50 to 15 bucks and it's pretty random as to when it occurs trees there's trees well, there's trees. You got the tree variable. You bumped into one of those variables. Too. Yeah, I, I bumped into one of those variables. Overall, it's worth it. I mean, I think this is an interesting part of the country to go see, and I think it's I think it's worth uh, I think it's worth the effort to come out here and do this. But you know, you just got to take your time and go slow and not be in a hurry. Yeah, we're gonna be on the turnpike like the whole way. How much are these? Well, these down here? if you're an automobile, it's thirteen eighty five to go to the end. But then if we're second class, we're twenty eight forty five or thirty five fifty five or class four. Like, what what class are we? Are we class? Are we class one? Oh. We were on the line. It said it said RVs were class one with two extra trail, two extra axles. Okay. Forty-two dollars, and you don't take cards. Wow. Wow. Here you go. Forty-two dollars and seventy-five cents. Our biggest toll to date. Good thing we boondocked last night. But you know what, though. Really? The road was so smooth. <laughs> it was terrible. I mean, it was so well maintained. I mean, the money goes directly into the road. I don't think there's any question about that. And as soon as we get off the turnpike, we see another toll. Like, I'm talking within 10 seconds. Toll violators, $25 fine. $8. $8, I nailed it. <laughs> Here you go. You're just gonna have to Drive safe. How can you drive safe when you're getting sh shaken down like this? <laughs> this is a shakedown. It's a total shakedown. Shake down. Forty uh, eight. So $42.75, and now eight, so it's $50. We've just been $50. Seven. All right. Well, that was $7. The next one goes by weight. The next one goes by weight. Um, well, it's gonna be $12 for this. Oh. Excuse me, sir. What are you doing? 
I'll tell you what I'm doing. I want to buy eight hot dogs and eight hot dog buns to go with them. But no one sells eight hot dog buns. They only sell 12 hot dog buns. So I end up paying for four buns I don't need. So I am removing the superfluous buns. This is getting insane. This is just, this is ridiculous. Why don't they have ATMs at the tools? Why don't they just take credit cards? Well, we finally arrived at the KOA in Washington, D.C. And we noticed that the freezer started smelling a little bit when we were in New York. Is that right? So it needed to be defrosted. And when we released the Salt Lake video, Sailing Solar gave us a tip for quickly defrosting the freezer. Pull everything out, drop a towel down there, use a hairdryer. Looks like it's working really well. Working good, Trish? So thanks Sailing Solar for that. Very helpful. Man, look at that. How long did that whole thing take? Oh my gosh, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Wow, where did all that ice come from? Oh, this is only a portion. Yeah, you're right. It was so much back there. 